Caleb, will you have this monitor tonight? That's one of my songs right there. Anything that talks about I belong to God, <laughs> I love. I love the lyrics. If you belong to God tonight, just join us in prayer. Father, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. We celebrate you for your goodness and mercy, your love and kindness. Thank you for life, health, and strength, the activity of our limbs tonight. Thank you for the breath in our bodies. Thank you for the blood that runs warm in our veins. Thank you for keeping us another day, Lord, to be able to lift our voices and praise you, to give you worship, Lord, tonight. Thank you for the opportunity to come into the house of the Lord. And we're like David tonight when David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Somebody didn't make it, but we're glad because we made it into the house of the Lord. And for this, we give you praise. For this, we give you thanks. Open up our hearts and our ears to hear your word. Let it get in our spirits, Lord. Let it lift our spirits. Lord, give us life. We speak life in the room, in this atmosphere. We speak life. We speak healing to the mind, to the body, to the soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody give them a praise in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We bless you. So good. God is so good. Can I get one witness in the room? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You said it was going to fall, didn't you? <laughs> I got excited. I got excited. Amen. Are we live, Pastor Caleb? Huh? All right. Welcome all those that are on Facebook, YouTube, wherever you may be watching. And I hope that we can say something that will bless you this evening. And uh, I was talking to my wife and God gave me a wife that's kind of old school. <laughs> She like them long Bible class. <laughs> and I'll be trying to give y'all a shot in the arms to, to keep y'all until next, next, uh, the next service, which, which is Pastor Daryl, good to see you, which is Sunday. Amen. Um, but I'll, I'll give you what, right, she said, take me to school. And uh, I'll give you what the Lord has given me. Um, it is an extension or uh, addition to the message about hope and um, man that blessed me when he when he gave it to me it blessed me and um, so what are we preaching on this Sunday Sunday morning I believe it was and sister Brenda was shouting talking about keep hope alive and uh, and so tonight we want to yeah we want to talk about hope um, but tonight the topic is, Sister Harris, uh, Minister Harris, is reboot your hope. Reboot your hope. I was, um, I have a studio, a couple studios, and in the studio we have some pretty fancy gear. Um, Pastor Daryl know what I'm talking about. And... Um, some people work with PC computers, and some people work with Apple Macintosh computers, and I just happen to be a Mac man. Uh, <laughs> I had to tell a lady, Wilma, I had to tell her tonight. She, she, you know, we have these things about Androids and iPhones, and I just had to remind her at lunch today, I said, I have more Apple products than you can imagine. I just got them stacked up, Apple products. There are people that, that are in the room and, and watching online. They don't care nothing about Apple or Android. As long as I have a phone. I don't care if it's an Apple phone or, or an Android phone. <laughs> Brother.
Brother Brown, he got he got a uh, yeah a smart flip phone though. All right, so my computer would not reboot the other day. And I'm trying to power the computer on, and it wouldn't come on. It took about 30 minutes for the computer to, to open up, to come on. And, and there's a chime that happens to let you know that the computer is working, okay? And it took a good, maybe we were talking, so it, it may have been longer than 30, 45 minutes because the conversation had gotten good to us. You know, when you when you plan, time just kind of flies, right? Y'all remember the old saying, when you're having fun, time flies. And so we were talking and having fun in this conversation and didn't think about the time. But I finally heard the computer say, ching, and it had rebooted. But it took forever. So when it takes time for your system to reboot, that means there's a problem in the system. Some of us have problems in the system. The way we operate, the way we function, the way we do things. I was struggling this morning, Pastor T, because I heard the Lord say, it's time to get up and pray. This was 5 o'clock, y'all, a.m., not 5 p.m., 5 a.m., and 5 a.m. to my body is in the middle of the night. It's not morning. It's not no good morning. <laughs> it's in the middle of the night, y'all. But the Lord said, I need to speak with you. And he woke me up, and I went, and I prayed, and he was giving me the, the lesson for tonight and adding to the lesson that we taught about hope. And the reason that we can't, reboot faster is because the system has a glitch in it. The glitch is I don't want to get up and I don't get up. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. God is calling. God is talking. And our body says I don't want to move. Actually, this is the spot, God, and you want me to get up now? What is wrong with you? We need to have a conversation. And God says back to me, that's what I'm trying to do. Have a conversation with you. Because I want to reboot some things in your life. I want to revamp some things in your life. I want to reboot here it is, your hope. Why is God saying, I want to reboot hope? Y'all have seen it. You've, you've seen it on the news. You've seen it uh, on the internet. You've seen it. People are losing their minds. I mean, they're fighting depression. We had a shooting where a... a a son shot his mother right in Harper Woods. Harper Woods, is a, that's our neighbor. And, and, and some of their family goes to our church. It's crazy. It's chaos. It's chaotic. People are losing their minds. The reason they're losing their minds is because they lost hope. That's the reason. They've lost hope. They, they, they said, there's no reason to live. There's no reason to give. There's no reason to invest. There's no reason to share. There's no reason to love. There's no reason to embrace. Then the Bible said there's a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Didn't it, didn't it say that there's a time to live and a time to die? Didn't it say there's a time to laugh? And there's a time to cry. Is that, in, is that in the book? And so all we see are times that people are crying. All because they lost hope. So Proverbs 13 and 12. You have it from that Sunday that I taught. 
Proverbs 13 and 12. And Pastor D, I'm working on that book. I'm, I'm working on it because it's, it's got to come forth. Somebody shout out, book come forth. Joyce Jackson's on there. Mother Bean, I see you. Sister Angela Morris and Angela, Mother Washington. I see the people of God online. Um, Joseph Gregory, I hope you're there. I know you, you'll be on there before it's all done, said and done. Proverbs 13 and 12. Hope deferred make it the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is like it is a tree of life. Let me say it again. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. In other words, when your hope is fulfilled, <laughs> when your hope is fulfilled and your desires come through, how many have some desires that, that they need to come through, some things that they need, some things that you're hoping for. You need it to come through. You need it to come to pass. When your desires come through or come to pass, it is like a tree of life. When your hope is fulfilled, it gives you life. Not only does it give you life, but it's like a tree. He compares it, the word compares it to a tree. Now, y'all know, <laughs> I got to tell y'all this story. I, you know, I got a bunch of them. But when I was younger, <laughs> we're on St. Clair, I, I loved playing sports, and we were playing football. And uh, I loved, you know, I, w I would run. I was so fast, and my cousin and I, David, we were, we were like the fastest guys in school, elementary, of course. And um, so one day, we're playing football, and I'm running, and I'm looking like this because the ball is coming. Uh-oh, some of y'all know what happened. As I was looking that way, there was something planted w many years before I was born that wasn't moving. It was called a tree. And so I'm running this way, looking that way. <laughs> I tore myself up. I tore myself up. Pastor T, I ran into the tree. And when I was laying on the ground, I was like, why did you move? The tree was not moving. I was, I wish that it had knocked me out then I wouldn't have felt the pain <laughs> that I was feeling at that moment. It didn't matter what I did. I got up thinking, y'all seen the movies and stuff, kicking the tree like the tree, it's the tree's fault. Like, y'all taught y'all kids how to do that. Hit the table, the table didn't hit you, hit it back. What hurt you, the floor hurt you, hit the floor. <laughs> that's what they taught us, so that's what I did. I'm getting up, kicking the tree. Knowing that, well, not knowing, that if I continue to kick the tree, then I'm going to break my toe. I already fell out. <laughs> Some of y'all getting a kick out of this. Maybe that's what happened to me. I don't, I don't know. But I'm still here, thank God. But the tree did not move. And so if you plant your hope in God, you're like a tree that won't move. Don't plant your hope in other stuff. Don't plant your hope in money. The money comes from the tree anyway. Paper comes from the tree. Don't put the hope in the money. <laughs> plant your hope like a, tr like, like a tree. Plant it. In Psalms 1 it says, plant it like, like a tree by the rivers of water. And then, and then after a while it's going to bring forth fruit. It's going to produce. Somebody say produce. One of the things that it will produce is hope. <laughs> when you're planted by the tree, by the rivers, then you're going to produce hope. 
And, and let me be honest and let me be truthful. There, won't, there will be days, Jesse, there will be days that you feel like it's hopeless. It's a hopeless situation. Can we, can we be honest in the room? There will be days where you feel like, man, what, what, what is it worth? Why is it, why is it worth it? You know, some of us pulling out our hair, wow. There's going to be days that you just feel hopeless. One of the reasons that we feel hopeless in this life is because we're living in the land of the dying. And so the body goes through its changes. My mother used to say, <laughs> if she was still here, her birthday was yesterday. And she would say, uh, when people start acting up and acting crazy, she said, the sap is rising. I really never knew what it meant, but I knew what she was saying. <laughs> because you would look at people and you, you can see them. They, they lost hope and they're going crazy and they're doing crazy stuff because the sap was rising. Which signified there's changes taking place. And most of the people that were doing crazy stuff didn't know how to deal with the change. This is why we have hopeless seasons. This is why we go through times, Sister Hopes, where we feel hopeless because things are changing. They're like constantly changing. Things are constantly changing. Things are not how they used to be last year. Am I saying something? Things are not how they were five years ago. So it's either changing, Pastor D, for the best or for the worst. So hope deferred makes the heart sick. When the heart is sick, the whole body is sick. When the heart is sick, the whole body is sick. Something wrong with your heart, buddy? You're going to feel something in your hand, tingling in your arm, in your leg. If you got a heart issue, not just physically, but emotionally as well. Not just emotionally, I'm going somewhere with this, but spiritually as well. If you have a heart issue, well, why, why aren't they in church? Some people have heart issues. They have heart issues. And so they, 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 they took something personal and, and, and something that the pastor said, it wasn't even meant for them. Like, that's not even meant for you. And, 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 and it's, it's just the word. The pastor said something from the word of God. Like, you know, there's a heaven and there's a hell, which is absolutely true. And you can't miss both of them, no matter how hard you try. And so they leave. And they're upset because there's a heaven, or the pastor said, there's a heaven and a hell. They have heart issues. They have heart. I'm never going back to that church. If God made it this way, it's a heaven and a hell, then we have to deal with that. We have to live with that. And you have to make a decision where you're going to go. <laughs> I ain't going, I ain't going to hell, y'all. Yeah. I can't do all of this and, and be all of this and who all of, who who God called me to be and then miss heaven. Come on, y'all. Come on now, Elder Jimmy. Come on now. I can't do all of this, live for Jesus and try to live right and struggle and maybe even suffer sometimes and miss heaven. What? All right, let me get back to this topic. So we're like a tree. We're like a tree, a tree of life. A tree of life gives, it blossoms, it gives life. You know, and it, and it you know, God made us, and I, I hope I'm not getting ahead of myself, but he made this body to recover. Just in case you forgot, I have to remind you, he made your body to recover. Have you ever had a scratch? And a few days later, you look at the scratch, it's, it's bad. But a few days later, 
a scab has come over, it has closed up. And then a few months later, the skin is there. And then a few years later, you don't even notice that that's where that scr scratch was. You don't even remember where the scratch was. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He made your body to heal itself. He made the body to heal itself. And we are his body. We are the body of Christ. I'm, I told you I'm going somewhere with it. We are the body of Christ. So as the body of Christ, we have to reboot our hope. And when the body of Christ seems like it has struck a sick nerve, we have to help one another. We have to hope one another. We have to hope. Say, I have to hope you. <laughs> Your dad said it. I'm, I'm going to hope you. You know, you ever seen somebody come in church and they got their head down and they looking all sad? Like, you know, I, I got to, I got to hope you. You wrote that down. Help others process eternity. You ever seen them come in and they, it seemed like that man? It, it seemed like life has just beat them down, not beat them up, beat them down. And and it, it doesn't matter what you say to them. You can smile and say, oh, it's so good to see you. And nothing about their countenance will change because they fell into a hopeless situation. And so our job as the body, here we go. Our job as the, as the body is to lift them up, to encourage them and say, look, sister, it's going to be all right. I know it's, it's a little gray right now. It's a little dark. You know, and it's, it, it seems like it's midnight and you can't see your way through it. But our job is to tell them, hold your head up. Look to the hill from with coming to your help because your help is coming from the Lord. Come on, I come to hope you. I come to hope you. Pastor Z, that's blessing you, ain't it? That's what your dad used to say? He's... <laughs> That was his word. Thank you. That was his word. I, that's what I'm coming to do. I'm coming to hope you. I, if somebody's on the road, side of the road, I don't know, something about me, just I'm, if they got a flat tire, I'm just something about me, I just I have to stop and help. But not just help, hope. If I'm close enough, I'll run home and get my jack, and I'll come back. And I'll help hope them. Hope them out of a situation. This is the season, y'all. This is the season to hope somebody out of their situations. People are overwhelmed. <laughs> They're overwhelmed. You, you, you. We used to take trips, Christy. We used to take trips all the time. And we got to a certain area we knew we were there because the, the smell was so bad. And it seemed like while, while we were passing that area, every time it seems like they were stacking stuff on top of that. It was trash being. A, and that's how some people life is for them. It's, it's every time you turn around, it seems like trash is stacked on top of and it smells. It's bad. So what is your job? <laughs> somebody going to pick up the assignment tonight and hope somebody because we're the body of Christ. First uh, Corinthians 12, 27. First Corinthians 12, 27. Now ye are what? The body of Christ. And members individually, but we're one. Amen? Amen? Romans 12 and 5. So we, being many, are one body in Christ. Thank, thank you, Lord. One body in Christ. Romans 12 and 5. And every one members 
one of another. I'm my brother's keeper. But I'm so glad that the body was made to heal itself. And when you understand, stand, when you understand this, then you can reach for hope every time. You can, you, you, there's never, it may feel like it, but there's never a hopeless situation for the children of God. It's never a hopeless situation for you. It may look crazy. It may look like it's never going to come through or come, you're never going to get your breakthrough. Your money's never going to straighten out. It may look like you'll never find that, land that right job. It may look like you'll never get, catch up on your rent or catch up on your bills. It may look hopeless. It may look crazy. But there's hope. Because you know what to reach for. <laughs> I know where my hope is. I know where my hope lies. I know where my hope comes from. Y'all know if you, if you put hope in a person, they may let you down. <laughs> they may, they just may come to a point that they let you down. But if you learn how to hope in God, woo, learn how to put your hope in God. When I was learning how to ride a bike, they took the training wheels off, and, and I, I had to learn how to balance myself on that bike. I fell a couple times. But I didn't lay there and be like, oh, i never ride that bike again. I'll never do that again. Because I just believe on the inside that I can get up and get on that bike. I saw somebody else do it. I saw my parents serve God. I saw my mother go after God. I saw my father go after God. I saw them go after God when nobody else was going after God. I saw them in the prayer meetings. I saw them. In the foot washing services. Y'all, we forgot about that stuff. <laughs> Take me back. Oh, not to that. But I saw them being faithful to God. No matter what came up against them. No matter what they were hit with. Losing loved ones. Losing a child. I saw them keep pushing. Keep Pressing, keep going, keep moving. Can you keep moving when the heat is on? Can you keep pressing when things are hitting, buffering up against you? Can you keep moving? Can you, can you, can you be faithful? Uh-oh. You're messing with somebody. Can you, can you remain faithful even when you don't have money? I don't have money. For God. You, you have to be so faithful, believing God, that when you come to church, somebody's going to put some money in your hand and you'll have enough gas to get back home and come back to church. It's, it's got to be that crazy because the devil is that crazy. He makes you think that you can't go on. He makes you think that you might, you might as well just give up right here. You might as well just quit right here. You might as well jump off this bridge right here. You might as well run that car right into that divider. You might as well just give up now. That's how the enemy tries to trick us. But how many know he is the father of lies? <laughs> he's not just a liar, but he's the father of lies. And so he lies to try to convince us to take our hope from God and to take our hope from the things of God. I'm not taking my hope from God. Come on. The enemy has not done anything for me but made me pray more. Come on, somebody. When he comes in and he, he's tripping, I, I didn't see it. Anybody else had that experience? The enemy comes in and he is tripping. 
I found me a corner somewhere, Sister Cookie, and I began to pray. And when I, when I prayed, I prayed. I didn't care how long it took. When I got up from praying, things changed while I was praying. And, and so God rebooted my hope. He rebooted my hope. Somebody needs a, a reboot. Somebody needs a reboot. You know, just because you're in transition or you, you're changing some things and things are changing around you rapidly doesn't mean you, you, you should be hopeless. Because if you are hopeless, then you become sick. You become sick. And if you're sick, how, how can you be used in the house of the Lord and you're sick? Not because somebody put it on you, but you, you allowed sickness to come on you because you lost hope. If you need your hope rebooted, lift your hand real quick. Say, Lord, reboot it. Reboot my hope. Just like I've rebooted that computer and, and finally it came on. It took a, it took a minute. But it came on, and when it came on, I was like, praise the Lord. Now I can do what I need to do. Some of us need to be rebooted so you can do what you're called to do, what you need to do, what God has purpose for you to do. You need to be rebooted. You a minister, you evangelist. What made you stop telling people about the goodness of the Lord? What made you stop preaching in the, in the, in the uh, grocery store? What made you stop telling people that God is good? What made you stop doing that? The mask, what, what made us stop? What made us stop testifying? We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You can't stop. You can't stop testifying. You got to keep testifying. You got to keep telling them, look, there is hope for you. There's hope for you. This place is established so that we can tell this community how to hope again. The church is here. It's planted as a beacon of light so that we can tell people how to hope again. Don't look at what's around you. It may look like a, a war zone. Houses boarded up. Don't look at what's around you. Don't look at what's around you. Some of us, that's the, that's the issue. We, we, so long, we've look, we're looking around like, what they doing over there? <laughs> Chris, Pastor Chris is saying, that ain't none of my business. <laughs> what, that ain't, some, somebody ought to say it. That ain't none of my business. Whatever, whatever's going on over there. Let that go on over there. That ain't none of my business. Unless God has given you an assignment to help them, let it go, y'all. Let them do whatever's going on. Let them do them, and you do you. And, and you doing you is hoping in God. You doing you is trying to change the world. You, you doing you is trying to change your community. So the church has been set here to hope this community. We've been sent by God. Oh, that's a whole nother way of looking at it. You, you, you have an assignment. Some, some people don't know why they came to this church. They came, I, well, I ain't had nowhere to go. No, that's not why you're here. <laughs> or, or my pastor died. That's not why you're here. You're here on assignment. And the assignment is to hope this community. We... Uh, you might have to do some edits, I don't know. But most people have to pay for food to be given out. And the lady told us, she said, most people have to pay for this. They came to us. Hello? They came to us. They say, you don't have to pay nothing. These are your delivery dates. Can you give us more than one? I'm like, oh, wait a minute, hold on. More than one day? Let's start with the one, and then we'll see if we can add to it, because <laughs> one day is a lot. <laughs> so we, I'll let you know about two days, <laughs> but the one that we'll do the one day. And the Lord set it up. Look at that thing. He set it up to where we can give hope to the community. I didn't, we didn't, you know, 
The money don't come in like that, y'all, where we can buy a whole bunch of food and just give it away. So God had to set something up. We had another situation where there was, there was clothes, brand new clothes. They called, they contacted us, said, y'all can come and get, come and get the stuff. And they set up days and scheduled days where we can come get brand new clothes so we can give it away. I mean, boxes and boxes. We have to ask them what size truck we need. Because <laughs> you, can't, you can't just take a car. You can't take two cars. So there's, you got you to gotta take a truck. Because there's boxes stacked, stacked, and stacked. That's because the assignment of Greater Pentecostal Temple, that's because the assignment that the Lord has given you is to change this city, change this community, change this region. It's not just preaching. It's not just prophesying. But we're going to get out of the four walls and we're going to hope the people. Can I get one witness in the room? We're going to hope. It's, it's too long that the church has been sitting on what God has given you. God has given you some stuff. He has invested stuff. Come on, some of us are so fat. Y'all got quiet. <laughs> P-H-A-T. With the things of God. Come back. <laughs> With the things of God. And guess what? God is still pouring into you. But he's not just pouring into you for you. Thank Jesus. <laughs> he's not just pouring into you for yourself. He's pouring in you so you can pour into somebody else. Y'all know some, you know somebody that need hope. You know somebody that need this message. You know somebody that need to come to church. You know somebody that need to know God in the way you know God. You know somebody that need to change. I'm, oh, let me calm down. Ooh. You know somebody that needs to change their lives. And turn their lives around. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some, I'm giving you some homework. You got a month to hope 10 people. You got a, you got a month, Sister Harris, you going to write it down, to hope 10 people. I mean, for real. The kind of hope, Sister Cookie that when they come to the church, they're going to say, if it wasn't for Christy Butler or Pastor Daryl, Pastor T or Sister Harris or Mother Brenda or Jaleesa, or, if it wasn't for you and what you said to me, I would be gone. If it wasn't for the hope that you gave me, I would be out of here. In Deria, if it wasn't for what you said to me, I would have taken my own life. Hello, somebody. I want you to find 10 people. And for the next 30 days, start telling them everything that God downloads in your spirit. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. I mean, even if you got it 10 years ago. I love Pastor Daryl because we... When we start talking, it just, everything just comes alive in us. Like, his memory, he's, he's, his, <laughs> his, he remembers stuff from like 1970 and 1960. I'm like, I wasn't, stuff before I was born. I wasn't even born yet, man. I'm younger than I look. Let that pass. Let that pass. And so we, we'll start talking, and he remembers the names of movies and the actors and the actresses. And the, I'm thinking, like, I don't, man, how do you remember this stuff? You know, not only that, I mean, words to songs and, and music and the artists and who wrote it. And this man is a library. But when we start talking, life 
starts to jump off of <laughs> one another. And we start, we start talking. I talk about the stuff, my, and my dad says, it, man, you got a good memory. Not like this guy, this, this guy over here. But we start talking and stuff just, we're bouncing the goodness of the Lord off of each other. We're talking about his goodness and not only what he's done, but what he's doing. And then we get into what he's going to do, what we're expecting him to do. We're speaking hope into one another. God sin. It's a God sin. We're speaking hope. God is going to send you somebody. Don't hold back the language. Don't hold back what you got to say to them. Don't hold back what God is telling you. Come on, you got to hope them. Start to speak into their lives. Tell them, you have purpose. You have a reason to live. God has called you. The hand of God is upon you. Come on, even before you were in your mother's womb, before you were conceived, God called you. He knew you. He called you by name. You're here for a purpose. Come off the ledge. Come on. Come off the ledge. Come out of depression. Come out of those things that have you bound and that have you heavy. Come on out of it. Shake yourself. If it's on you too heavy, come on. I got to talk to you for days. I'll talk to you for days. Y'all got 30 days. Go get them. And tell them there is hope. You can believe again. You can believe again. Because when you start to believe what God has for you, then you can receive what God has for you. If you don't believe, you won't receive. If you don't believe in the Holy Ghost, you can't receive the Holy Ghost. It's that simple, y'all. So if you believe in the hope that God has given us, he says, I come to give you life and that more abundantly. If you believe in the light that he came to bring, you can get it. And there is hope. There's hope. Keep hope alive. <laughs> that was Mother Brenda. Keep hope alive. <laughs> Keep hope alive. Reboot your hope. And when it, when it seemed like it's taking a minute, because sometimes it does, it takes, takes a minute, you know, and you, you just don't know what I've been through. You just don't know my story. You don't know how hard it's been. You don't know my struggles. I understand because I've been there. I've been there. I've, I've had days, y'all still with me online? I've had days that I did not want to get out the bed. Anybody ever been there? I didn't, I didn't want to get, not because I had pain. I just didn't, uh, what, why do I have to get up? Why, what, what reason? What, yeah, you just, you had no energy. You had no nothing. You had, I'm just going to stay right here. I ain't, I ain't taking no calls. <laughs> Bishop don't like that. <laughs> What'd you say, Bishop? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I ain't taking no calls. I don't care who called me. I ain't answering nothing. I don't turn my phone off. But I haven't done it since, since I've been pastor, and I got to keep the phone on. I'm 24-7 pastor. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. I'm 24-7 pastor because I have to hope, hope you. I got a call very late the other day, and I had to hope somebody. I had, to, I had to talk him through it. You know, some of you going to get some calls. And you're going to have to talk some people through some stuff. You're going to have to hope them. Are you ready for the challenge? Are you ready for the challenge? Do you already have your, uh, you know, I feel that. Write it down. Write down your people. Write down your ten people. And, and the, Lord, the Lord is going to give you what to say. He's going to give you what to say. I don't just sit up and think about people and, okay, Lord, okay, maybe you want me to call them. He'll, he'll, give, he'll drop it in your spirit. Y'all heard uh, Apostle Moore talking. The Lord dropped him in my spirit, and he dropped him in my spirit at that time when he needed to hear that somebody was praying for him. 
So the Lord is going to drop somebody in your spirit. You're going to call them when they need to know that you're praying for them. Not just anybody, but that you're praying for them. Hello, somebody? That you're praying for them. That you're praying for them. That you'll stop what you're doing even at that moment, that very moment. And you'll begin to pray for them on the telephone. I had an uncle call me some months ago. He said, I heard your voice praying for me. And I said, let's go. I started praying right there. <laughs> right there. And, 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 and no quicker than uh, three seconds, he's speaking in tongues. Not even speaking in English anymore. Because there was something in his spirit that needed to know that somebody else was praying for them. And God put me on his mind. God is going to put you on somebody's mind. So when you call, they're going to be, oh, I was, I was expecting you to call me. I just didn't know when you were going to do it. Don't hesitate. And when he drops it in your spirit, do it then. Don't wait. Do it then. Because they need it now. I feel that in the spirit. They need it now. Some of y'all going to call somebody when you leave here. Call them. And tell them what the Lord said. Reboot your hope. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let us pray with anybody that needs prayer in the room. Let us pray for you. Pray with you. Um, I love the fact that we're the body of Christ and we can stand in agreement um, with you. If, if you. if you're going through anything, we can stand in agreement with you. Um, those that are online, we'll, we'll be praying for you as well. God is up to something and he's up to something big. And I'm glad he's doing it in this season. I'm glad he's doing it in this season. If you need healing in your body, Pastor Caleb, you turn the air off. <laughs> feel some heat. <laughs> I feel some heat. Amen. Um, Cookie, make your way this way while you're walking. Um, Sister Cookie is a minister, y'all. She's a licensed minister. Her mother is a licensed minister. And, uh, huh? Evangelist. And um, so we're grateful to have them. They joined us a few months ago. And so we're grateful for what God is doing in their life. I'm going to have you pray. Um, pray for those that are standing and those that are online. Let's see. Jen Jennifer said, keep her in your prayers. Yeah, they Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know what everyone is going through on today. God, we ask that you deliver them. God, let them know that you love them, and the only way that they can get through what they're going through is through you. It's through the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you bring us to and from our destination safe and sound. Let everyone make it home safe. And God, bless the sick. It's so many sick. God, bless the sick. Bless the spiritually ones that's sick in the heart. God, bring us back together as one. God, show us and tell us who to talk to and when to talk to them. God, lead us on today because somebody need our help on today. So, God, we ask in all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying for um, Sister Will's brother. Said he was hospitalized today. Uh, Sister Jennifer, they couldn't hear her praying. Uh, Sister Jennifer needs prayer. Um, Evangelist Preston, uh, auntie, we call her. 
Can you pray for the ones that are online? First lady. Hallelujah. Check, check, check. Make sure you get. Pastor Kenny, we good? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you hear now, CC? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Can they hear Pastor Caleb? Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your name. We praise you. We thank you for hope this evening, oh God. We thank you for the hope that you have placed in front of us, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the hope that you have placed in our spirits, oh God. We thank you for our leader, our pastor, giving us a fresh word of hope. We thank you, oh God. We thank you for teaching us how to reboot our hope, oh God. And Lord, for the people that are online that are requesting prayer, oh God, you know what they stand in need of, oh God. Evangelist Preston and Sister Jen Jennifer Jones and Brother Joseph Gregory and Sister Telesia we uh, Wills in uh, Ohio. Lord, you know what they stand in need of, oh God. And Lord, even the unspoken prayer request, oh God, we ask that you meet them at their needs, oh God. Lord, we ask that you reboot their hope, oh God. Reboot their hope, oh God. Lord, and let someone call them, oh God, or let them call someone, oh God, that needs hope today, that needs to hear a word from the Lord, that needs to hear a word from on Zion, oh God. Lord, lead them to the rock that is higher than us, oh God. Lord, give them the hope that they need to make it, oh God. Someone doesn't want to go any further, oh God. But Lord, we ask that you restore their hope, renew their hope. Give them fresh hope, oh God. Lord, turn that deferred hope into gladness, oh God. Lord, we ask that you restore their hope, oh God. And Lord, give your people a mind. Give your people the mind to minister to those who are hopeless. Teach us how to help the hopeless reboot their hope. And Lord, if there's anything else, if there's any sin, we repent right now in the name of Jesus. Anything that is not like you, oh God, anything that we have sinned against our brother or our sister, if we sinned against ourselves, but most of all, if we have sinned against you, oh God, Lord, we repent because we want our hope restored. We want our hope rebooted. We want fresh hope every morning. So we thank you, we praise you, we bless you, and we glorify your name, and we place our hope in you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The song came to my heart of, you turn my morning into dancing again, and you lifted my sorrow. I can't stay silent. I must sing for your joy has come. Let me do it one more time. You turn my morning into dancing again. And you lifted my sorrow. I can't stay silent. I must sing. Get it? <laughs> you turn my morning into dancing again, and you lifted my sorrow. I can't stay silent. I must sing for your joy has come. If you believe that, give, give God praise in the room. Amen. Thank you all for coming out. Thank you for those, to those that have watched us online. It's offering time. It's my time to be blessed. It's offering time. It's the reason we say it's time to be blessed because every time we give, 
God turns around and blesses us <laughs> every time we give. Y'all ready to give already? Y'all ready to give already? Dancing again. Brother Brown. Lifting my sorrow. Come on. I hurry up. Come. Come. We have a visitor on Wednesday night. We haven't had a visitor. Well, we have visitors that come online, but she decided to join us. Viv, Viv, it starts with a V. Viva. Bernie. Bernie. Thank you for coming, Bernie. Sister Bernie. So, First Lady. Oh, I wanted you to hold this, brother. Hold this. <laughs> you turn my morning into dancing again. And you lift in my sorrow. I can't stay silent. I must sing for your joy has come. Oh, oh, oh. Dancing again. Oh, okay. Oh, I can't stay silent. Don't go far. I must sing for your joy has come. Real quick, um, we haven't seen the our rapper boys, um, <laughs> my new sons, for a couple weeks. But um, Sister Cookie's gonna tell us why. Bless the offering, bless those that have given tonight. Lord, bless them that they will receive some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold, that you would uh, bring a mighty harvest to their homes, God. Bless their homes financially, spiritually, physically, emotionally. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for what you're doing. We give you praise in advance. We believe it's done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Okay, I'm going to make it real quick. Uh, my grandsons, them, they signed. We signed up to do the state fair contest. They BOF. <laughs> I'm nervous. Uh, it's BOF, <laughs> and um, out of 75 groups, uh, they was picked. You know, and so they make. They didn't win first prize, but they won third prize. Amen. They outbeat 72 groups, and they are gospel rappers. And wow. they, the, the judges, them, were like. They never had the, the, the gospel rappers or just rappers. They didn't know how to judge them because everybody, we had, they had people running from the back um, to come and, and, and come up there. And so they did, the judges said they just didn't know how to judge. They only could judge the way they normally judge. So next year should be better. But God told me the first should be last and the last should be first. They was number three. But next time, they will be number one. So keep them in prayer, because we've been doing a lot of running around with, with, with the uh, state fair and stuff. So y'all continue to be pray for them, because God has opened up doors. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Sister Jessica, I said your name, but you don't want your face to be seen. You got to talk. Can you talk in a mic? Praise the Lord, Saint. I just wanted to say something real quick just to piggyback on what Pastor Charles was saying about um, getting your 10 people. Just to encourage you just to stay in your word, fast, and pray. Um, and get you a circle of prayers that you know that's going to seek God, that, that's already seeking God. Because it's not easy. Um, seeking people. It's not easy talking to people because there's people out there that got serious issues. And there's been times I had to go to my mom, my sister, and Crystal and say, hey, can y'all pray with me? Can y'all pray for me? Because I even had to talk people off the ledge. And when I tell you it's not easy, you have to pray, you have to read your Bible, and you have to fast. So just make sure when you're getting into our word, when we're seeking these people, and tune into God and listen to him and allow him to use you to talk to these people. That's good. Wow, that's good. Come on, give God praise. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Bless you, brother. Pastor Caleb. Is that your? Oh, yeah. 
I remember that. You remember me? Yeah. This is where I remember you. That's right. That's right. She um, she came for a funeral, and she uh, it was her was it your your son-in-law, mother, your son-in-law's mother, and so she was here for a funeral, and she told us that she would come back. Um, and she came back. She said she's been putting it off, but she finally decided to come. I hope that message was, I hope <laughs> the message <laughs> was for you. I believe it's right on time for the people of God. Amen. Come back and see us. I know your, your husband's a, a pastor and a minister, um, but when you get a chance to hang out with us, uh, come on. Is that, is that him? That's him. I said, who is that man of God coming in here? God bless you. God bless you. Amen. I think he had a church event online or something. <laughs> good to see you, man of God. Let's step to our feet. We're going home, y'all. Everybody good? Let the Lord use you to encourage somebody on this week for the next 30 days. Pick you 10 people. To encourage, not only just encourage them where they are, but bring them, have them come, have them come to the house of the Lord, tell their testimony and tell that if it wasn't for the grace and mercy of God, that none of us would be here, but they'll be able to come and tell the testimony that because you spoke into their lives, that they're here today and they made a decision to hang around a little bit longer. Amen. Father, we speak a blessing over everyone that's in this room. First of all, we thank you because your word says in all things to give you thanks. That is your will. And so we thank you for everything that you've been to us, everything that you are, and everything that you will be. Bless each and every one that's online. Bless each and every one that's in this room. Keep us safe. And cover us with your blood, the blood of Jesus against anything that the enemy tries to do, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing, and we praise you in advance because we believe that we're walking in fresh hope tonight. We believe that we're walking in your hope, and our hope is in you. And we give you praise for these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Make sure you hug somebody or dap them or do whatever and let them know you love them. Sister Jesse, we love you, and nothing you can do about it. God bless you. your man. Thanks for coming through. I know you couldn't. <laughs>